I wouldn't necessarily say he's just been that much better, uh, you know, than his previous two seasons. Obviously, he won a Cy Young in each of those seasons, and I think he's very deserving should he win it this year. Uh, that said, I'm not going to, you know, say he's made this giant leap, but where was there a leap for him to make? This guy's coming off two amazing years, 18 being a historically good year, uh, you know, and for what he's done this year, I mean, the uptick in velocity is, is – impressive uh the fastball just the command everything he's always kind of had that uh you know so just seeing what he's done has been very impressive i'm not ready to say he's had this tremendous big step forward uh because there just really wasn't a whole lot of place for him to go i think that's a pretty rational answer to that question and by the way you rarely trend upwards in your 30s he's had more velocity on his fastball every year of his career let's welcome andy martino dan grasso to the show um dan and then andy who do you view as the favorite right now in the national league cy young race and should the strength of competition be considered here right now I think that Bauer is the guy to beat but he still has two more starts to go and that last start this weekend could be at Minnesota who you know is a very potent offense twins could need the game so they might be playing their regulars for that one though but you know you think about the people that vote for the Cy Young Award a lot of them the baseball writers they're those crotchety old kind of preservers of the unwritten rules of baseball Fernando Tati shouldn't be swinging 3-0 hitting a grand slam my point is is that a lot of this is a popularity contest and and a lot of those type of guys don't like Trevor Bauer, and he's kind of quirky, and he's kind of on his own planet at times. You know, taking the ball from Tito Francona last year and throwing it over the center field fence, you know, injuring his finger with a drone, stuff like that. So those could go against Bauer when it comes time to have the votes cast, and that's why I think that it could go towards the guy who's been your two-time defending Cy Young champ. And if he has another gem this weekend, you talk about closing strong, that could play in Jake's favor. You know, I actually disagree with you, Dan, on that point that I actually I think that the voting dominant voters have moved from being the crotchety old traditionalists to the uh, numbers obsessed uh, dorks that are in my generation. And that's how Jacob deGrom has won the Cy Young legitimately, mind you, over the past couple of years with such a few amount of wins. I mean, we're at the point now where voters are looking at it in, in all kinds of modern detail. We'll consider uh, a deep dive into the statistics, as they should, and doing their diligence as voters. And we'll vote a guy. Wins are completely out the window, of course. Uh, you have, uh, I think, the strength of schedule that Doug referenced will be factored in because I think a lot of voters take a really deep look at it and have gone completely in the other direction of being that old guard of people. I also think, by the way, it's absurd that a bunch of baseball writers and, and all their subjectivity determine anything about a pitcher's legacy. Talking, people talk about, well, he's a surefire Hall of Famer if he wins three Cy Youngs in a row. Uh, well, that should be based on his performance and not what, you, what a bunch of idiots uh, like me would, would vote.